story begins in 2007, when Apogee followed up the release of their first digitally controlled all-in-wonder Firewire audio interface for the Mac, the Ensemble, with a first professional portable all-in-one Firewire audio interface, the Apogee Duet. It's a brushed aluminum brick with a big knob, quarter-inch headphone jack, and being a proto-eye device, the Duet needed to look pretty, so all the I.O. is provided by the massive breakout cable. Now, all was well with the world until 2014 rolled around, and Apogee pulled the plug on support. That train rolled into the station. I wanted to know if it would Linux. I did, so I headed over to the Fado web zone, only to find the typically out-of-date and incomplete device list was decidedly more useless than normal. Now, not to be deterred, I questioned the Googs, and it led me to a kernel commit from 2018. Takashi-san had added it to his Firewire stack, so I headed over to the Git, and inside of Hinawa Utils, I saw this. It's a CLI for controlling the Apogee Duet on Linux. Armed with a sliver of a hope, it was off to eBay, where I ran across this little guy. A used, four parts only, Ampagee Duet that appeared to be covered in what I can only describe as a layer of shame. Since this shows more of a public service and doesn't really have a budget, I decided to take the gamble. Worst case scenario, I end up with an aluminium brick and uh, possibly an extra box of latex gloves. And here it is. This is exactly how it arrived in the post. Um, yeah, looks like somebody cleaned it, but check it out. We got input one, input two. We got a nice round, spinny, clicky knob. I'll put, see how thick it is? This is not a small device. I have big hands, but um, yeah, it's got a footprint. Let's take a look on the back. You can see a little worse for wear, but hey, made in USA. That's not something you see often. On the back, you do have your typical Firewire 400 port and something that looks like a VGA connector, but it's not. On the other end, just a headphone jack and two lights for phantom power on and off. So how do you connect anything to this? With this guy, this is the not VGA cable. This is the breakout. There's a lot of breaking out to be done. What do we have on tap? We have not one but two full-size XLR connectors, cleverly disguised by the microphone signal, but they do lock. That's always a bonus. Now, we have two line ins and two line outs. We have a guitar. That's going to show up and, as you might have expected, a speaker. Out left and out. Right, and in two is just another guitar. Now these are all quarter inch to get the size set up and they click it very nicely, very tight. Connecting the breakout cable piece kick only goes in one way. If you've ever set up a VGA monitor, really it's the same thing, man. It's that, uh, what is it, uh, D sub? And just screw that in and we should be good to go. Let's, uh, connect the firewire to the device and maybe we can put some sound through it this is a firewire 400 cable this is the business end probably not going to show up on the camera but you get the idea this is a quite thick one because it's quite long and it only goes in one way as with most firewire devices if you manage to force it in the wrong way it will probably knacker it but it has sprung to life so we do have that one knob to deal with. And that's how you cycle through input one, input two. And by holding it down, it takes the headphones out of mute. Now let's put a bit of the audio through it so you can see the left and right VU meters. Those are basically active anytime audio is going in or out of the device. Plugging in the device is as simple as this. It immediately shows up in Pavu control where we have all the options. Stereo output, stereo input, duplex, same thing you would expect. This is what you would see plugging in a USB DAC 
BioWire is the same thing, especially with this, since all support is built into the kernel. No surprises here. Recording with a duet is just as easy as it would be with any other sound card or DAC. Just make sure you have it set for duet multi-channel. And I can launch the recording and just cut the gain up on microphone one. And the volume should come through just fine. It's not a problem. Uh, all of this right out of the box. No fiddling around. Speaking of fiddling around, A play L, that's our list. System sees it. But if we want to do any changes, this is the catch because we have one button to work with on the device physically. We have to use the Hanoa Apogee Duet CLI. So if you don't like command lines, this is not going to be the device for you. There is currently no GUI for it, but it's relatively intuitive. It's very simple to use, and it'll allow you to adjust things like polarity, gain levels, input levels, input source if you're coming in over a line level or a mic. And you can take a look at all of your meters, the current knob states, and... I think there's some basic mixing functionality in there, but even I do not want to tango with mixing functionality from the command line. This is Jack. This is probably what you're here for. Um, I always use Cadence, out of the box, basic settings, just to confirm that, hey, it's gonna work for you at home. I have it set to Firewire. Default settings, uh, real-time 10, 2048. On the ports, buffer size, 128, period set to three. Three is the magic number with Fireware devices. We tap that start button as we always do. Springs to life. And as I like to point out, ignore the 17x runs because Cadence likes to connect Pulse Audio Jack Bridge. And that's that. And that's the only ones that you will ever see, but it does the job. In and out, so you can use this device with Jack, with Pulse Audio, as you normally would any other. This is our 15 minute torture test. I'm just going to blow through this real quick. I put this into a weekly daily Wednesdays as a show we do on Wednesdays, a recording session. I have input one and two going into the mic. It's feeding it the most sauciest, most delicate fan noise. I just plug two mics in, point a fan at it. It's got signal going through it. And I have return buses for left and right audio. Set for the output, what I'm doing is I'm looking to see if we get any X runs, which are just buffer overflows, which would result in pops and clicks in the tracks. I'm running this with Audor 5 point whatever it was. Moving on to round trip latency, no surprises here at 44 512s, about 50.13 milliseconds all the way, driving it down to 16, 2.96 at 48k. 512s, 45.97 at 16 low, 4.49. Again, no surprises there. And the best it can do, 96K, 23.23 at 512 and 2.56 at 16. And all of this is completely usable. Hey everyone, we're at the point of the video where I normally um, have this microphone, I have a condenser mic and some other stuff. Unfortunately, the one thing that I could not get to work with the Apogee Duet was Phantom Power. It says it's always on. I'm with the Hinawai utility. It's on. I try to cut it off, try to cut it on. It always just says it's on. I plugged a condenser mic into it. No joy whatsoever. So we'll just have to live with this. You know it. You love it. This is the Golden Age D2 large diaphragm condenser microphone. You might have never heard of it. YouTubers have yet to discover these, but recording studios unfortunately have. So even now, they can be difficult to come by, mainly because they're $150. Uh, you need roughly 53 to 56 dB of gain to get one of these up to level, which our little duet can happily do with its 70 plus dB on each preamp. But this is what I sound like running through wrong side. This is what I sound like running through our stack. But what I am going to do is I'm going to pull everything off and just bring it up from the bottom and get an idea of where we're at. So let's do that. 
Let's get that bounced around. We're going to come up, um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Okay, so maybe a bit higher. You can definitely hear the um, uh, background noise in the room. So I can actually, I might have to edit this. Let me give you an idea of, I'm coming in on my meters, um, peaking about plus six, that's on a K20. So if we're looking at standard DB, that going to be averaging somewhere around minus five. I am curious about uh, what my level is. This is an unfortunate thing. I'm going to have to use the CLI. Let's try that again. What do I need? I'm still learning this. If that's input gain. Can I get away with input gain? Okay. So yeah, I, I'm just a little bit above. I'm at 59 dB on the... Apogee Duet. So, yeah. That's what it sounds like. It's, uh, I can go ahead and kick that back to... This is what I normally record at with, um... If I kick the stack back in, do a noise suppression, a gate, compression, de -esser. We don't need a delay. And let's get our, um limiter back in. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. That's uh, what it sounds like. It's extremely clean. It is an Apogee preamp. So actually, I got the wrong thing on. You got to do that. That with a mix of that, I had the uh, noise suppression on, and that adds just that slight bit of delay. And if you're thinking about like a loopback delay, perfectly serviceable. This is running at uh, 128. And it's good. I'm very happy with it. So up next, I will attempt to play guitar in this tight little area. I'm not done coming up with excuses for how bad it is, but that's genuinely one of them. That is our Apogee duet from 2007. We got to talk about the elephant in the room, though, because this is a FireWire device, and FireWire is a dead technology. But you really shouldn't consider it vintage or retro, because those are effectively synonyms for useless. And under Linux, you're going to get more and pay less simply by picking up a brand new PCI Express. FireWire 800-400 card. You just are. And you're going to be able to avoid the dumpster fire that is USB audio interfaces in general. Um, hey, what do I know? Maybe you like chasing down X runs and having little weird gremlin issues. Me, I just want to focus on recording. And man, it's the business for it. Now, we need to talk about should you buy the Apogee? Do what? In 2020. We gotta look at the pros and the cons. Let's start with the... Yeah, let's start with the pros. Let's start with the good stuff. Because, man. That 75 dB preamp. Apogee preamp. 
is brilliant. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm using it right now for dynamic mics. It's it's really nice, man. Um, and out of the box, since support for the duet is in the kernel, it's going to work with Ulsa, which means it's going to work with Pulse Audio. If you just want to use this thing YouTuber style, and by that I mean you just want to stab it with an XLR mic and put some headphones on and go, whoa, what's up, fam? Without uh, using jack, it's doable. And I don't want to gush on it, but I will. I got to give credit where credit is due is the headphone headphone amp in this thing is extremely high resolution, man. It just is. I was hearing detail. Oh, granted, just stuff from the YouTube music library. I was picking up like this is one song I never realized it had a very subtle bass line sitting in the background. I mean, what? Picked it up with this. I was surprised. I was surprised. You know, I have Motu back here. I have Presodus back here. Uh, I have M Audio. I have Avid stuff. Picked it up with this. You know, in the 7506s. I was okay. Credit what credit's due on that. Also, it's buzz powered. Firewire, man. You can. <laughs> Firewire can put a lot of stuff through, man. It, it can do effectively 45 watts, man. 30 volt, 1.5 amp max. You can power a lot of stuff with Firewire. One of the reasons it's so thick. Now, let's talk about cons. Cons. Phantom power. Couldn't get it to work. I don't know if it's this unit. Again, I paid $20 for this. So, for me, I, I don't get to complain about anything. If it just cuts on, I'm like, hey, it works. Uh, it always stays true it stays in the state of true using the uh utility it's not on i've tried to plug in condenser mics a couple of them no effect on you know mic one or mic two try to cut it off everything i could think to troubleshoot it but then again um if you are thinking about picking one of these up it's probably going to be for dynamic mics so yeah keep that in mind now Speaking of controls, there is no GUI for the utility package. You're going to be on the command line. So keep that in mind. You know, it's got limited mixing functionality. If you ever want to tinker with that, things like uh, recalling your volume and stuff like that. If you want it to stay the same all the time, you'll have to do what I've done is just script it into like a Jack startup script. Another thing is there's no MIDI. No, that, that's a reality, man. And along with no MIDI, there is no ADAT or SPDIF. So digital connectivity out of the question. So let me put it like two. Yeah, let me put it like this. If you're looking for like a high quality preamp on a budget, like a legit one, not like this one sounds really good. You know, this is just a great preamp. If you're looking for that, if you're looking for something that's going to drive out of the box without a cloud lifter, a fat head, cathedral pipes, uh, who am I missing? I think that's it. Clark CT1. Something that's going to drive like a Shure SM7B, your PR40 from like Heil or an RD20, like a D2. This is a no brainer, man. This is the best preamp you can get for the price, man. More on the price in a second. And you know what? The line level inputs, they're more than good enough for just recording like the occasional track. I didn't have any problems with it, man. I'm not a big fan of the breakout cables. Maybe that should be a con. That's just reality you're going to have to deal with. But if you need to record more than two tracks at one time, you know, there's two mics, two lines, but you can only use one of each or both of, you know, how that's going to work. Or if you have a condenser mic or if you need to connect MIDI devices or the idea of using the command line to change settings, both anchors and confuses you not the device for you run run i say now we're gonna talk about what you should expect like reasonably to pay for one this one i took a gamble on you know maybe you'll run into one like that you're also going to be taking a gamble at 20 bucks there's an equal chance of it not working at all but looking on ebay i'm gonna say if you can get one with the breakout cables 
I'd feel comfortable paying any anywhere between because they swing wildly, but a reasonable price to pay for one would be anywhere between fifty and like a hundred and twenty dollars, depending on the condition. Because sometimes it's like ah, this one's you know it's a bit scruffed up. It's seen better days, but it works. And if you're like me, hey, that's all you care about. It works. All right, I'll take it. Then you'll see some that are uh, you know pristine with the box manual and all that that's when you're going to start seeing and you they're definitely listed for like 180 200 dollars those people are delusional sorry resellers you're stuck with that because it pretty much linux users are the only ones capable of using this device right now and it's awesome so you got to come down on that price um it's old tech it's not valuable to anyone but we can take advantage of that and that's absolutely brilliant. Um, all in all, I'm definitely happy with it. I absolutely am on the lookout if you know anyone, or maybe you have one that you're not using, is the original version, the 4 chip. Well, it's really 8, but it's got 4 preamps. It's called the Apogee um, Ensemble. It, it lights up like a psychotic skittle on PCP, but I'm willing to look over that. I want to see how well one of those works. But if we've got to talk about delusions, resellers on Reverb and eBay think that's going to fetch somewhere between four and six hundred dollars on depending on what day of the week it is. And these are like probably the same 12, 13 devices that I've seen on eBay and seen on Reverb for the year, year and a half that I've seriously been looking for. No one's touching one at that price. Uh, yeah, call me. We'll see if we can work something out. I'd happily, you know, pay a hundred bucks or something like that to test one and cover shipping and all that fun stuff. But hey, this was fun. I learned stuff. Hopefully you did too. And uh, yeah, come over to the Firewire side. We're not going to bring it back, but man, let's take advantage of these deals for recording. All right. That's almost going to do it. I got to thank, as always, the beautiful people who make this show possible. Uh, that's our source of funding, man. That's how we do the lights. As long as the lights are on, I can use some extra cash, pick up some things, hopefully provide maybe a little bit of extra information. I'm definitely trying to get a hold of the uh, YouTuber special, like a focus right. I'm going to do a video for like OBS, setting that up, best techniques. That's in the future. It's going to be USB. I know, but hey, man, you take one for the team. Plus, I think it'll help people out because there's a ton of misinformation on YouTube, which is also, yeah, one of the reasons I'm doing this. But hey, thanks to all these people. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you like what we do, you want to kick us a buck, that'd be awesome. That's brilliant. These are all the people back here who have helped me stick together. This little studio, this little testing rig. We do the shows Linux Gamecast weekly. Every Saturday night, we go live with that at 8.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 for patrons. we got a pretty, pretty super chosen. And Wednesday, we do a general technology, Linux, open source, floss, all the awesome stuff. And I try to dig up a few strange stories there at the end. Weekly, daily Wednesdays, that goes down at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll do it live on Twitch. Check the schedule, always available in podcast forum, be it on iTunes, SoundCloud, basically anywhere podcast star will be there waving at you. Cool. That's great. I got to get out of here. But as always, man, guys and gals, um, it's not your equipment, man. Learn to use the equipment you have. You're going to make better stuff. It's going to be brilliant. Most importantly, just get out there and make something awesome.